Today marks one month since Hamas launched its deadly terror attack on Israel. The initial attack killed 1,400 people there. The war has killed thousands in Gaza. There are also more than 200 Israeli hostages being held by Hamas currently. Some family members of those believed to be held are in Washington, D.C., today calling on U.S. lawmakers to do more to get their loved ones home. Two of those family members join us now from Washington, Doris Lieber and Laron Berman. Doris, Laron, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, Doris, I'll start with you. When was the last time that you spoke with your son, Guy? What did he tell you? Um, it was on the 7th of October. Um, the first call uh, I made, actually, after the sirens were were loud and clear all over Israel. Um, at first, I didn't think much, but something was, you know. I called him, and he said that uh, they were, they were, they actually evacuated themselves from the Nova Festival party. Uh, it was a peace festival. Um, I asked him where he's driving, and he said that he doesn't know yet. Um, so I said, well, what do you mean you don't know where you're driving? And he then, you know, thought for another minute and said, Mommy, I'm coming home. Mm. It was morning, and he lives closer to uh, the, the festival. Uh, so I, I asked, what, why are you coming home? So he said, to finish the food that that you made for me. So I was happy and said, yeah, come over, um, drive safely. Uh, about half an hour passes by, his father, Michel, calls. Um, and he says, do you know where Guy is? I say, of course I do. He's on his way home. I just spoke with him. He says, no. I just." I just talked with Guy, he's on a conference call, and um, he's in a terror attack. All his friends were killed, and he's shot. Uh, I come online, I can hear the shooting all over, and at that point, his father says, don't speak. And he says, but I, I want to say goodbye, I want to say my last words. And his father says, don't speak. Just look around and check if there's any bodies on the ground. Try and crawl under a body and act dead. Wow. And um, when I try to speak with him, his father says, don't. Because if he answers, they're, they're going to hear him. So I just tell him, guy, stay put. I'm getting somebody over to, to rescue you. I love you. Don't give up. And I just hang up. That's, that's the last time. Yeah. Liran, I understand that your brothers were abducted in a kibbutz attack. Can you talk to us about what, what do you know about what happened and what do you know about their whereabouts? Uh, yes. Uh... They were abducted from their homes, from their beds. Uh, we all lived in Kibbutz Kfar Aza, uh, close to the border of, with uh, the Gaza Strip. Uh, our last contact with them was around 9.30 in the morning of Saturday, the 7th. Uh, my mother got on the phone with one of them around 8, uh, around 10, sorry. and. Since then, no contact at all. We had no idea they were considered missing for 10 days. We had no confirmation, no nothing. Mm. Uh, after 10 days, uh, the Israeli government uh, officers came to us and told us that with 99.9% .9 guarantee they were kidnapped into Gaza. Mm. It was 10 days later. Uh, but our last contact with them was on uh, the 7th of October, yes. And, and uh, quickly, Doris, do you know, ha have, has anybody given you any update, uh, the Israeli government or the U.S., about um, 
how Guy is doing, is, if he is among the hostages? Well, um, the first um, information that I got that he was actually a hostage, until that point uh, I, I was thinking that he was just, that I didn't get the message that he was identified as dead, but uh, we got um, a TV uh, show showing a Hamas uh, a Hamas guy saying that Guy Ilus, 26 from Tel Aviv, was killed in the bombing of Israel, bombing Gaza. Um, shortly after that, a uh, military called me and actually affirmed that he is considered to be a hostage. Uh, so to that point, um, I, to this yeah. point, I still don't know if he's alive or not, uh, but there's a lot of mind games going on. It's like a psychological game that they play with us. I can't imagine um, what that must be like for you, um, just that lack of answers. And I can't imagine the strength that it takes both of you to go there today to speak with lawmakers. What message are you sending U.S. lawmakers about the hostage situation, about the way that the war is being carried out, and what are they responding to? What, what has your experience been like today? What do you want them and the U.S. audience watching to know? First, first of all, I just want to say that we are not here as part of, of the Israeli government. We are not political people. Both of us, we are families of hostages, and we came to speak to the Congress, to the House, as families, uh, our family members. My younger brother and Doris' son were kidnapped into Gaza, and we came to the House to plead to them to do whatever they can to help bring our family members home. We ask them to put leverage on Qatari, uh, on the Qatari government, mm. uh, which are now excluded from law, from the law due to being a channel from humanitarian aid. But we know that the Qatari government has connections to Hamas, and we pleaded the House to help us put leverage on the Qatari government to speak with Hamas, to give a sign of, of good faith, to let the, the Red Cross enter. We are doing whatever we can as families to put as much power as needed to have a sign of, 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 of human, human being uh, to, to release the hostages or at least get them uh, medical aid. And, and how receptive were lawmakers today? I mean, besides, of course, showing empathy and listening to you, how much do you, did they respond or say, okay, this is what we're going to do, uh, Doris? Well, um, I have full trust. I have no other, no other thing to, you know, rely on. Um, I, I hope they, you know, do the other step and, and start action because it's been a over a month now and we have nothing. There are over 240 people held hostage. We don't even know the exact number. There are still uh, people, children, that, that can't be identified since they were so brutally tortured or burned. Uh, we need a list. My son was shot. I want to know if he's alive, if, he's, if he needs medical care. Um, you know, I'm asking what, what I ask myself to do anything that, that is possible to, to get in contact with them and start a procedure, not, you know, not only talking. I, I, of course, there are a lot of people that sympathize, sympathize but it's not enough. Not enough. Doris, thank you so much. Lieber, thank you so much. Liran. Thank you for letting us talk. Thank you. Appreciate your time.